everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 15 of Hypervolemia. Last episode, we upgraded our altar to this tier 5 one here with all of the beacons around the outside, and I think an extra 54 runes around the edge of the thing. And since the end of last episode, I have done what I said I was going to do and replaced every other rune on this outside layer here with a rune of superior capacity. And now our altar up here has a capacity of 211,137 life points, significantly more than the 30-ish thousand that we've had for the last few episodes but you'll notice that there are still quite a few rune slots around the outside edge that are still just filled with normal runes and the first thing that I want to work on in today's episode is upgrading those runes to actual runes that do something other than are just there to make the altar a tier 5 altar you'll also notice I have upgraded the altar in visually to look a little bit nicer I've just got some stone here from chisel as well as some carpenter stairs uh, just to make it look a little bit nicer because it was kind of starting to look a little bit drab uh, I should probably do something with the rest of the base as well because because there was a lot of just red rock and red cobblestone all around the place here, which doesn't look particularly great, but that is a problem for another time. The first thing I want to do is complete a quest and add some more runes to the outside layer of this altar, and I'm going to do that by completing the last quest in this Offering More section, or at least the last quest that requires us to craft a rune, and that is this quest here, Pumping Blood number one, and this wants us to make one rune of acceleration. Now, uh, this rune kind of stumped me a little bit before this episode started, because uh, I have not got this far into Blood Magic before, and when I say that, I mean, I haven't done uh, too many of, I haven't made too many of these runes before, and a lot of them do very similar things, but slightly differently. Like, last episode, we had the runes of augmented capacity and the runes of superior capacity, which both essentially did the same thing to the altar. They both increased its capacity, but they did it in very different ways, and the rune of acceleration is very much like the rune of dislocation uh, in that it allows you to pump more blood into the altar, but it does it in a slightly different way, in a way that kind of coincides with the rune of dislocation, whereas the rune of superior capacity worked kind of uh it's just better than the rune of augmented capacity. So the way that the rune of acceleration works is that it allows you to pump more times per second, if that makes sense. So right now, uh, we have, I think, 25 of these runes of dislocation, which means that we can pump about 1,900, so just shy of 2,000 millibuckets every cycle into the blood altar. And I say cycle because right now it happens about once every second. And what the rune of acceleration does is it increases the number of cycles that happen per second. So right now, uh, the 1,900 life points get deposited every second or so. Uh, if we add more runes of acceleration, it might happen every half second, every quarter second, maybe every tick, which is 20 times a second. And therefore, basically, the rune of acceleration allows us to pump that 1,900 in more frequently, therefore pumping more life points into the altar overall, and just increasing the amount of blood that we can pump through the system uh, at any given time. So, uh, that's like the technical bit out of the way. Hopefully that made sense. I don't know if I explained that uh, all too well, but we're going to make some runes of acceleration. Thankfully, these runes of acceleration do require speed runes. And I say thankfully because that means that we can get some use out of the blood runes that we kind of just have sitting down here on the floor. Also, uh, a bunch of people in the comment section did point out that I should just put glass down instead of trying to make the whole room bigger to fit the altar in. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense. It allows me to like walk around now while still being able to go down here and access all of my runes without having to make the whole room bigger and move everything and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, let's go ahead and grab a few of these runes. This is going to significantly reduce the uh, the amount of uh, life points that the altar can hold once all of these runes of superior capacity are gone. But for now, let's go ahead and grab like three, let's grab five of these. So four and five of these and see if we can make ourselves five runes of acceleration. I'm not quite sure about the hard stats around the rune of acceleration. Like, I don't know how much of an effect each individual rune has. But the quest book says that we should make about 19 of them. We currently have, uh, I think, 22 slots left around the outside edge of our tier 5 also here, so I'll fill about 19 of them uh, over the course of between this episode and next episode uh, with the runes of acceleration then we'll put like maybe some extra speed runes, maybe some extra runes of dislocation uh, in to the rest of them, uh, but before we can do that to make this thing, we are going to need some ethereal slates, these guys are the tier 5 version of the slate, they require 30,000 life points apiece uh, our altar can currently only hold 21,000, okay, uh, in that case we should probably put these back down uh, and just make some fresh ones, it kind of pains me because I don't like wasting these runes but uh, as soon as we put those back down, the altar's capacity does go all the way back up. We need one right on the end there. Uh, the altar's capacity goes up to 211,000, which means we can make like six or seven of these at a time, whereas previously uh, it wasn't really able to do that. So let's go ahead and grab like five of those, stick those into the altar to start making those slits. Whilst we wait for those to finish, is there anything else particularly hard about this? Not really. Uh, I did use a ton of iron between this episode and last episode, making all the runes of superior capacity. We had like over a thousand iron 
iron. Uh, at the end of last episode, we now have almost half of that, uh, and so it is quite an expensive endeavor. Thankfully, uh, iron is not something that we are particularly low on, but uh, let's go ahead and make four of those. Let's also go ahead, and I guess that's pretty much it. We could make more of these, but I'm going to actually wait until we have five of these ethereal slits. Also, another really cool thing that I like about the new uh, Sigil of Sight that we got last episode is that it actually shows you up in Whale at the top what the current, like, percentage progress is of uh, the current thing that you're trying to craft up. So, for example, if we put another one of these uh, demonic slates into the altar here, you can see it's got a little progress bar there that goes up. It's quite nice. It gives me a good idea of how things are going and how long it's going to take for something to be done. And now that we've got five of these ethereal slates, we can come down once more. We can pick up five of these. One, two. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to accidentally break all of these. This thing is way too too fast when it's set to fast mode to not break everything so let's take that fifth one of those and let's see if we can make ourselves five runes of acceleration so we'll stick those in there we'll start by making ourselves five speed runes which is missing a bit of stone which i smelted up before the episode started so that shouldn't be too big of a deal whatsoever we got 11 of those which is a little more than i was uh, banking on but that's fine we'll stick our orb in there and we will get one because we don't have uh, enough of the buckets. So let's make a few more of those, I guess. Uh, you know, we'll make 16. That should be enough to make four more. We'll throw in all of the slits. And boom, boom, and boom. We get five of these. Nice. Now, like I said before, I'm not quite sure the uh, like 100% what the actual effect is, but I know that it's going to increase the number uh, or the amount of life points that we can put into the altar uh, every tick. So let's put these down again in this kind of crisscrossy pattern. I'm not quite sure why this one doesn't have a Sfax texture. Maybe my um, uh, texture pack's a bit out of date, but we'll throw these down again like so. And now we run into the problem of the basic mechanical pipe. Because up until now, we have been getting by with basic mechanical pipes on all of our systems. Everything here is made using basic mechanical pipes and on Unfortunately, basic mechanical pipes do have a limit to how much they can carry. If we go over to mechanical pipes over here, uh, they're hard to see in any eye because it's all black. But the first one here can transfer up to 100 millibuckets per tick. Now, people often get confused between per tick and per second. There are 20 ticks in a second. And so this basic mechanical pipe can transfer about 2,000 millibuckets per second. So up until now, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, we're, we're pumping in about 2,000 per second-ish. That is what we were doing before we put down the runes of acceleration. But... Now that we have those runes of acceleration, and especially once we get all 19 of our runes of acceleration, we're going to be a lot closer to doing that 2,000 millibuckets per tick instead of per second. And as you can see, this thing can only pump 100 millibuckets per tick, aka 2,000 millibuckets per second. So we need to get one that can transfer about 1,900 millibuckets per tick, which takes us all the way up from the basic one right through to the ultimate one, because the one before it can only do 1,600. And so we now need to make ourselves at least three these are two i guess these two here of these elite pipes we might even possibly have to replace all of these pipes around here with ultimate pipes i'm not quite sure if this tank here is gonna be a good enough buffer probably not uh, but thankfully what i have done between episodes is made a bunch of enriched alloy and uh, we're gonna waste a little bit of redstone here i'm gonna have to dump that out because uh, if we look at the recipe for the ultimate mechanical pipes it is some elite pipes around an atomic alloy elite pipes are just advanced pipes around a reinforced alloy advanced pipes are basic pipes around an enriched alloy and so what we need to do is we need to go through like the stages and make every single one one at a time thankfully we do have some basic mechanical pipes right here so we can go ahead and make 16 of those we then need to upgrade this guy with some diamond if we go ahead and grab some of these uh, also a bunch of people have pointed out i really should make uh, some kind of magical crops diamond farm don't worry i will be working on that probably between this episode and next episode i'll do a bunch of uh, extensions to the farm here uh, because we need like coal we need iron we need redstone we need gold we need diamonds all of those farms we can set up super easy now and uh, so we probably should actually work on that one two three four five might as well use up all the diamonds we can get we can come back over to here craft these up again like so and then the final thing that we need to get from elite to ultimate is the atomic alloy which is a bit more of either the compressed obsidian or refined obsidian uh, we do still have some refined obsidian and for now all i'm going to do is put the one through there uh, and that should work out just fine fine oh, we need to put you in there don't we not the other thing uh, is that good yeah that's good so we'll take you we'll put this back into here like so surround it with some of these elite pipes and boom i guess it's ultimate pipes nice so we'll take this and we'll use these to replace this pipe and this pipe by the way this is on fast mode i'm not quite sure why mechanism items take so long it's kind of annoying actually and uh, for those who are wondering this is how carpenter stairs work you put them down and uh, they are untextured you put a texture on them like that and then glass works just how you'd expect we need to get some marks we broke it uh, but i'm not quite sure why all the mechanism stuff doesn't break particularly fast it's a little annoying there's no wrench for them either uh, but if we do this this should now be able to keep up with the amount that we're pouring through it and uh, you'll see it is trickling through very very slowly that is because these things can hold up to six 
6,400 millibuckets per tick as well. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this is working. Let's grab our blood orb real quick because I knew Archmage's blood orb can hold up to 10 million life points uh, and I know for a fact that he's nowhere near full right now. As you can see right now, it is going down. It's going down very quickly. If we take this out real quick, I want to see how fast uh, it starts to fill up is my question. 7,000, 9,000. It's definitely a bit faster. It looks like it's doing that 2,000 maybe every like three quarters of a second, maybe closer to half a second. I'm not quite sure, uh, but it is definitely doing it faster than it was originally. And once we get all 19 of those runes of acceleration down around the altar, uh, it should be going definitely a much, much quicker than it is going right now. Uh, and then we will probably have to, at that point, upgrade all of our piping uh, to ultimate piping because obviously otherwise the bottleneck's just going to be here and putting the ultimate mechanical pipes here is not going to make up for the fact that all of these are basic pipes. But that is a problem for next episode. For now, what I want to work on in the next part of today's episode is completing a few of the Mine Factory Reloaded quests because we've got quite a few of them to do and we can make pretty much all of these machines already. Like, apart from the laser drill, uh, I think we can pretty much do everything else on this page. Starting with, I guess, uh, the hammer and the needle gun. Let's have a look over here. If I type in hammer, I'm fairly certain that the precision sledgehammer here is, like, super easy to make if we happen to have some sticks. We really need to set up some kind of automated way and maybe, like, start looking to maybe getting a second altar somewhere for making things like sticks, which are a bit of a pain because we have to get the wood. We have to turn it into, like, the wood chips that put them in the altar, wait for them to become oak planks, craft them up. It's a bit of a pain we could probably do with some kind of automated process for sorting that out, but that is the precision sledgehammer done. Next up on the list is the needle gun, which is this guy over here. We're probably not going to use the needle gun. Ooh, what do we need for this? We need a safari net launcher, uh, which actually isn't that bad whatsoever. We just need some more plastic sheets, which we do not have, but we can make super duper easily if we grab some of our rubber and just stick it into here, like so. This thing spreads it out quite nicely, craft it up quite quickly. We're going to smell that up again to make some plastic sheets. Before we do that, let's clear my inventory out just a little bit, uh, and then let's take all of you. That should be probably enough for now. One thing I definitely don't like about the fact that it spreads things out is when you try and take things out mid-smell, it does that where it kind of tries redistributing things again, and it makes it just a massive pain to try and get anything. Uh, but... We now have a ton of these. We can take those, craft them up into sheets like this, make a bunch of them, and then we should be pretty much good to go in terms of making this. All we need now is a little bit of redstone. Speaking of which, the next thing I'm going to make for sure after we make this needle gun is the lava fabricator because I am fed up of ruining the nether every time we need to fill up this little set of tanks over here. And I would much rather prefer that our blood dynamos over here that are producing more than enough power for our system right now would start working on producing lava for me. And so, once we've finished up this needle gun real quick, like, not like that, we need to make a block of redstone first, like that. <laughs> Once we've got our block of redstone, we can get rid of that, craft it into normal redstone, and then use it to make the safari net launch, at which point all we need now is two more magma creams. We did figure out uh, last time we were making magma creams that we can already make blaze rods thanks to our blaze farm, and we can make slime by using three rubber in our whatchamacallit thingamajig over here, the alchemical chemistry set. I always forget the name of this thing. I'm not quite sure why, but we'll do that. We will grab our blood orb real quick, which right now is sitting on a very nice 2.7 million life points, which is nowhere near uh, the maximum amount of life points that it can hold, but uh, it's good enough for now. So, once this is done, we should have ourselves possibly enough slime. We're going to need to make one more uh, to make those two slime balls. And then finally, the last thing that we need is a spyglass, which is some gold, some glass, some more plastic sheets, and a stick, all of which is fairly easy to do. So, if we come back over here, throw you in there, magma creams, it should be easy enough. And then finally, we need the spyglass, which we almost have enough stuff to do. I'm fairly certain that we have some sandstone lying around. We do. Let's quickly throw that in there, not on the floor. That should finish up pretty much instantaneously like that. I also found out the hard way the other, like, uh, between episodes, the glass uh, does turn into something else if you leave it in the altar. I can't remember exactly what it was. It was this here, these unbound crystals. I think I made a few of those uh, by accident between episodes. Yeah, I found 44 of them uh, whilst I was making this glass here, but... I think that's actually a quest under offering more, right? Yeah, it is. It's one of these ones here. Uh, not quite sure about the whole spells thing with Blood Magic. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that because I haven't ever actually done any of the spells within Blood Magic. But uh, and that aside, let's go ahead and make the spyglass like so and get ourselves a needle gun. Nice. That's another quest complete. We can go back down to MFR. 
hand in both of those quests like so. Claim reward, claim reward. Both of them gave us ammo for our needle gun, which we're probably not going to use. It fires nicely and uh, would be a nice thing to use to, to fend off mobs early game. But to be fair, in the late game that we're in right now, it's not really all too necessary. You can see it's firing like a little arrow here. Don't really need it. We've got a bound blade and we don't really fight mobs or all that often anyway. So uh, we're going to move on to the lava fabricator, which hopefully will make our lives a lot easier in terms of making redstone and hopefully will allow us to automate the process of making redstone pretty quickly. Although, saying that, it's probably not really that useful because we can just make redstone seeds, at which point we can just get unlimited redstone using the magical crop stuff. Uh, but we're going to make it anyway because getting lava, uh, lava is useful for other stuff apart from just making redstone. Uh, so let's take you, let's quickly get this going again. You know, I'm going to make 32 uh, slimes here real quick, just in case we need to make some more magma creams at some point during the episode. And then finally, the last thing is the uh, the machine frame down here, which I think, yet yeah, we can do because we got a bunch of iron gear spare. Let's make you. And now all that we're missing are the magma creams which again if we come back over here we should be able to make fairly easily let's grab you craft you up with some blaze rods which again we can make nice and easily like so get rid of you boom 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 and boom, we get ourselves a lava fabricator. Nice. All we need for this now is another lever, which, again, we have in abundance due to all of the dynamos we made. And all I'm going to do now is grab one of these, like so. Again, I'm not quite sure why those are super easy to break, but if I try breaking any type of pipe or universal cable, it doesn't work at all. Not quite sure why, but let's put you down right about there. Let's stick you on top. That should start to produce some lava, and I'm hoping to dump it into there. It is doing it. It's doing it very, very slowly. You can see it does 20 millibuckets uh, per cycle, and the cycle does take quite a bit of time here uh, but it works it's getting us the lava that we need and hopefully over the long run this thing will kind of just nicely fill up with lava and we'll have a nice supply that we can come and use whenever we like now uh, we could continue on and make a bunch more of these quests over here but uh, that's a bit dull these things are if we're not going to use them it's a bit boring making them because they just kind of sit in our inventory and it's just ticking things off on the quest book and so what i would like to work on for the final bit of today's episode is the tickers construct again you may remember a couple of episodes back we were struggling with these mechanism machines trying to make Tinker's Construct tools, and they just were not working. Now, for some unknown reason since last time we tried, they have decided to start working. I'm not quite sure if it's because I removed uh, the pressure pipes that were going around, whether or not it's because it would just needed a restart. I don't know, but we now have over here in the PRC 64 HDPE pellets, and if we take those out, it's still not working. I have no idea. I have no idea why this suddenly decided to work and give me 64 HDPE pellets, but I'm not going to complain because we need these to make the ingots like so, and then we can use these, I think like this, to make the sticks, which we can then use to actually make a, a tool rod in Tinker's Construct. So, uh, let's go back over to Tinker's real quick, and let's go over to the cast section, which is right over here. We're going to make a tough rod cast, and to make a tough rod cast, we need a blank cast as well as a plaster stick, which we've just cut. Blank casts are fairly easy to make. It is a diamond, emerald, or block of gold, I think. Yeah, with a blank soft mold. So, if we come back over into our AE system, making a blank soft mold shouldn't be all too hard. We just need two refractory clay, which I think we might have. We do. We'll take, I guess, three of those for now, because we might need them for other stuff as well. I'm going to use blocks of gold as opposed to emeralds or diamonds, because we have a ton more gold than we do emeralds or diamonds. So, let's get rid of all of you. Craft them up like so. That gets us a bunch of the soft molds, and we which point all we need to do is craft those up at which point you realize that despite the fact that NEI tells you that you can craft these up with blocks of gold, uh, you actually get soft block molds if you use blocks of gold. So instead, we are going to use diamonds to make these blank casts over here. And now that we've got those, we should be able, I think, to just come over here and craft up the plaster stick with the blank cast. And I think that's going to get us one of the tough tour rod casts that we need. Now, I looked at some stuff that we could try and make. I was going to make a sword uh, because for those who have missed out earlier episodes or simply forgotten, uh, the idea here is that we're going to make a tool, give it beheading, and then use that tool as a fight wither skeletons in the nether to get some wither skeleton skulls, at which point we can bring those wither skeleton skulls back, use them to make wither essence or wither essence seeds, get ourselves unlimited wither essence using agricraft and magical crops, and then use those wither skeleton skulls that we grow to make more nether stars, because in this mod pack you can use uh, wither skeleton skulls in an alchemical chemistry set to make nether stars, and we need a bunch of nether stars in order to upgrade to a tier 6 altar. So that's the plan, but unfortunately... 
There is no way to make any kind of sword cast, as far as I can tell. Like, you would think that you could do one here by looking at this thing here. We can't do this because we don't have any kind of Tinker's Construct smeltery. We can't make the smeltery. This we could do, but we can't make the wooden sword blade. It's not possible because to make it, we would need a wooden sword pattern. If we go over to pattern here and we look up the recipe for the sword blade pattern, there isn't one. I'm clicking on it right now. There is no recipe for this pattern. You cannot make any of these patterns because you have to use the casts to actually make stuff. And so we can't make this at all with a sword blitz. I'm not quite sure if we're just not supposed to be able to make swords or if it's just an issue with the pack, but I think we're going to have to make a hammer from Tinker's Construct instead. Not the most elegant thing in the world. I'm fairly certain that you can add beheading to a hammer, I think. Uh, so we're going to try it, and to make a hammer, we need, first of all, to have a tool forge as well as all the rest of the casts. But uh, let's see about making a tool forge real quick. Thankfully, we can make this. Uh, it's a little bit expensive. We need some uh, crafting stations, some blocks of iron, and some oak. Thankfully, it's not all too expensive. Let's quickly grab uh, some bones, make a crafting table, use that crafting table to make a crafting station, and then use that crafting station to make a tool forge once we have some blocks of iron. One, two, three, four. We are tearing through our iron right now, though. And that gets the tool forge. Cool. So we can put this down really anywhere we like. I'm going to put it here. And if we look inside, uh, again, we can. it shows the recipes for all of these blades. I would like to make a cleaver because the cleaver starts with beheading and therefore would increase our chances of getting wither skeleton skulls from the wither skeletons. But again, there is no way to make the sword blade or any of the sword blades uh, shown over here. And so we're going to make a hammer. I don't know if we're going to be able to use the hammer really outside of killing mobs in the nether to get wither skeleton skulls. But uh, that's fine. If that's all it's used for, uh, that is its job well done. And so for that, we're going to need a hammerhead cast as well as the tough rod cast that we've got and also a large plate cast to make the large plate cast we need two blocks of iron as well as a blank cast so and let's go ahead and grab ourselves two more blocks of iron like so and then what do we need for the hammerhead cast for this guy over here we need three iron pickaxes as well as a normal cast so to do that we need to use the pickaxe mold and a stick in the metal caster do we still have the pickaxe mold lying around we do let's take you let's stick that in there as opposed to this uh, let's throw some sticks in as well we'll take you we'll put those in here and then we'll just stick some more of this iron into the top slot over here that should start to smelt down pretty quickly and should start to make us a pickaxe we only really need three so i guess i'll put three six in there uh, so we don't waste it making 10 let's come back over here let's put you in the top let's put the iron blocks either side that's gonna make us the large plate cast i think yeah that's gonna do that which it is working on right now that is done and then the last thing that we need are these three pickaxes so let's come over here and take these out one at a time and a little while later, we have ourselves the pickaxe head cast. Nice. So, again, if we come back over to our tool forge real quick and look up the recipe for a hammer, we need one tough tool rod, we need one hammer head, and we need two large plates. Now, usually I'd make at least one of these out of paper to give us extra modifiers and stuff, but, uh, th again, there's no way of making any of the other tables apart from uh, the tool forge here. We can't use anything else. And so I don't think that we can make the large plate or the head or the tool rod out of anything that's not a metal straight through uh, the foundry setup that we have over here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make two large plates like this. It's probably going to take a while and probably quite a bit of iron. Let me put some more uh, into the top here. I don't know if this is like overkill or if we have just enough. Either way, we've got a bunch of iron left over, so putting extra in isn't really going to matter all too much. Okay, so a little while later, we've had to change course a little bit because for some reason, the alchemical chemistry set does not like making the hammerhead cast because the hammerhead cast has a very similar recipe to the pickaxe head cast uh, requiring just two less pickaxes. And so whenever I put in the three pickaxes to make the hammerhead, it just makes me a pickaxe cast. So now I have two pickaxe head casts and no hammerhead cast. And so instead, we're going to make a pickaxe and hope that we can put beheading on a pickaxe. Uh, so what I've done is I made a tool binding cast, which requires... Uh, some tough rods, so the tough binding did come in useful, and I've also gone ahead and made a normal tool rod cast, so uh, let's start by making ourselves an iron tool rod, then let's make an iron tool binding like so, and then let's go ahead and make a quick iron pickaxe head like so, and now I'm hoping that we can finally actually make a tool that we can then add a beheading to to actually kill some creatures. So, we now have an iron pickaxe, this is good. The way that you add beheading in Tinker's Construct is using obsidian and ender pearls, and so I'm hoping we have, what, one modifier, I'm guessing? Uh, it doesn't say how many modifiers we have. I hope we have at least one modifier. We've got three left. Okay, so if we put that on, it does actually give us beheading. That allows us to get all the way up to beheading three. Not particularly strong, I might add. It's only got an attack damage of three, so it's not particularly great for actually killing with us guys. 
skeletons. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over into the nether. I'm going to try and find some wither skeletons. Should be fairly easy. I know there's another fortress nearby. I'm going to try and kill some wither skeletons with my very weak pickaxe. Try and get some wither skeleton skulls. Enough to make uh, a wither skeleton skull seed. And I'll be back in a second. And way too much time in the nether later. We now have the four wither skeleton skulls that we need to make ourselves the wither skeleton seeds. What made it even harder was that I didn't take any torches with me. And it's like super dark. So I had to carry one around and keep dropping it and putting it back down. It was a whole pain in the backside. But we have the four wither skeleton skulls. I've just gone ahead and crafted up almost all of the Zavicio essence that we need. It's 500,000 life points a piece for each piece of Zavicio essence. We are getting hit right now. Which makes me think, yeah, we're a little bit lacking uh, in the life point department. We were so close because we did have 2 million before the episode started so I figured we'd be close to making it but we're 3 in. All we need now is the skeleton seeds which I think we have from before when we made the guest seeds and so we put those there, we put these in the corner, we stick the Zavicio in the middle and we are pretty much good to go uh, to start crafting our own wither skeleton skulls at which point we then have unlimited nether stars and at that point I don't really think there's a whole lot stopping us from making those tier 6 blocks. Let me check again real quick what they're called because I have completely forgotten we need to make some crystal clusters so making these now shouldn't be all too bad it's a lot of diamonds but we can craft ourselves some diamond seeds get them up to 10 10 10 get a ton of diamonds that way we could set up emerald seed farms i think emerald seeds are a thing let me check that real quick emerald seeds yep they're a thing we can make those real quick uh the flux the flux blocks should be fairly easy we're gonna have to start a bit of work on witch tree to get up to the attuned stones but now the nether star shouldn't be too bad they should be fairly easy the uh, ethereal slates of course fairly easy stuff uh the batania stuff not too bad we might have to upgrade our batania system a little bit uh, especially for that block of terra steel in the middle but we are pretty much looking good at this point how are we doing our life points we're a little far away and so it's going to take us a little bit of time for that actually to get up all the way up actually no it's only 500,000 is it so i'm gonna go away i'm gonna wait until this gets up to 500,000 at which point i'm gonna come back craft it up and end the episode and there we go a few seconds later we can take this out we cannot drop it on the floor because it's worth quite a bit we can bring it over to our a system throw it in like so and there we go we have the wither skeleton seeds that we set out to make uh, quite a few episodes ago now and what i'm going to do between episodes like i said make a bunch more farms get a bunch more seeds up to 10 10 10 do a bunch more agricraft stuff try and get a nice backlog of wither skeleton skulls emeralds and diamonds but with that guys i'm going to end this episode of hyper volemia there thanks for watching as always be sure to hit that like button it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below and i will see you guys next time.